Yes, it's true. Sydney house prices have fallen for the first time since late 2020. Does that mean that the property boom is over for Sydney? Is the rest of the country about to follow suit? Are property prices going to crash? Well, that's exactly what I'll be covering in this episode. Hi, it's Nero here from Investment Rise. And yes, Sydney prices have fallen. And so the property doomsday folk, they're celebrating. You know, they're the ones who will always tell you that property prices, they're going to crash. Property prices are just too high and their people can't afford them and therefore they are going to crash. Yet since October 2020, Sydney's median house price and Australia's median house price has risen every single month. But now we've had a change. In February of 2022, Sydney's median house price fell. So what does that mean for Australia? Well, one thing we do know is that uh, the headlines are having a, a field day. All right? We're seeing all sorts of spicy headlines like this. House prices to fall in Sydney, Commonwealth Bank predicts. House prices have risen sharply in the past 12 months, but it could be the beginning of the end for Australia's property boom. The Commonwealth Bank is predicting overheated house prices will plunge in Sydney and across Australia. Median house prices in the Harbour City have spiked 23% in the past year, but could drop nearly $200,000 by the end of 2023, analysis by the Commonwealth Bank shows. Or you have this from Westpac, which says, house prices to fall 14% Westpac. House prices will fall 14% over 2023 and 2024, as strong inflation forces the Reserve Bank of Australia to start lifting interest rates from August this year, according to Westpac. Seems to me a bit like the headlines we saw when COVID first arrived on our shores and people started screaming that property prices were gonna drop 30%. In fact, they've risen um, 30% in, in many areas across the, the country, okay? So rather than relying on headlines, let's go back to looking at the, the data. And here we have CoreLogic's Home Property Value Index monthly indices as at the 28th of February, 2022. And we're focusing just on houses here because there's no doubt that house price growth has far exceeded a unit price growth pretty much across the, the country, okay? So here we are, we're looking at Sydney, percentage change month on month in for February, prices dropped 0.04%, okay? Median price point. Melbourne, the median price point dropped 0.02%, okay? So we're not talking large falls here, all right? But look what's happening across the country. Brisbane, 2% price growth. And the rest of the country all positive as well, you know, Darwin, Canberra, uh, and, and, and Hobart. So what does that tell you? Well, it's the first message I really want you to take away from this, and it's that Australia is not one property market. We're a country of multiple property markets. So sure, Sydney and Melbourne are slowing. No doubt about that. The median house price growth has actually been slowing since about March of 2021 in those two markets, okay? And we're now sitting at a very much a flat market when we look at the median uh, price point. But then look at markets like Brisbane and look at markets like Adelaide. They're rocketing along, okay? And I expect those two markets at the very least, probably also maybe markets like Hobart as well and some regional areas to keep growing, not just in, uh, into 2022, but deep into 2023 because of many of the supply and demand issues that they have right now, okay? So the first takeaway message here is that don't believe in the headlines because the headlines are very much Sydney and Melbourne centric. Okay, and I guess in their defense, that's probably fair enough because that's where the majority of Australians live, all right? But you don't need to invest in just those two markets, okay? As you just saw, even if you just look at the capital cities, there are many markets far outperforming Sydney and Melbourne right now, and I, I do expect that's gonna continue for some time yet, okay? So the first takeaway message is, we are not one market, we are multiple markets. But let's now come back and look at Sydney right now, okay? So you saw from the data earlier on, median house prices have dropped 0.04%. But remember, even when you invest in a city, you don't actually invest in the city, right? You actually invest in individual suburbs, okay? You would choose an individual suburb and that's where you choose to, to invest, all right? And so I wanna now look at what CoreLogic reports as the worst performing areas over the last three months. So what I mean by that is we're looking at the suburbs where prices have fallen the most, 
and then I'm going to show you the suburbs where prices have risen the most as well. So first we're looking at the ones that have fallen the most, then the ones that have risen the most. So according to, to Core Logic, as at February 2022, the suburbs where pri house prices have fallen the most, Beaconsfield in Sydney, minus 9.2%. So prices have fallen 9.2% over the last three months. Newtown in Sydney, 6.6%. Surrey Hills in Sydney, 6.1%. Birchgrove, 6%, then South Yarra uh, in Victoria uh, has dropped 5%, 5.2%, and Turak uh, in Melbourne dropped 4.7%. Uh, so that should immediately tell you that, hold on, different suburbs are now performing differently. So not only do we have different cities performing differently, even within individual cities, suburbs are performing differently, right? I mean, if the median house price across Sydney drops 0.04%, but then you've got other suburbs here that have dropped as much as 9%. That also shows you that there, that must mean that some suburbs have actually risen in value, okay? I'm not necessarily saying that you need to target uh, Sydney, but what it does show you is that different suburbs are performing differently, and so you can't judge the performance of uh, individual suburbs based on general headlines or even median price point uh, data. You've got to dig deeper, okay? And this will become even more obvious when I now show you the suburbs that have grown the most over the last three months. And here we have it again, as at February 2022, core logic data, okay? The areas where property prices surged the most over the last three months. You've got Corral Bean in Queensland, 14.9%. That's just in three months, mind you, okay? Logan Central, 14.3%. All right, Logan is an area that many people sort of poo-pooed in the, in the past and say, oh, it's not so great or whatever else. But a lot of our clients have bought there and, they have done extremely well from a capital growth perspective, okay? And you can see here, Logan Central, 14.3%. But now look at this, Silverdale uh, in, in Sydney, 6.9%. Camden South in Sydney, 6.3%. Yes, they're on, on, the, on the outside, uh, outer parts of Sydney, yes. But the fact is, there are suburbs in Sydney that have grown quite a lot in just the last three months. Okay, and that's really what I want you to take away from this, um, this, this episode. I mean, here we've got Dromana in Victoria growing 5.5%, uh, Tutgaruk 5.4%, okay? And these are median house prices. So that's why as an investor going forward, you need to really start doing your research. You can't rely on headlines, you can't rely on people's opinions because it's gonna be too general, all right? There is no doubt that we're a country of multiple markets and even within individual cities. Different suburbs are going to perform differently. You're going to have to do your research. But if you're trying to work out, well, what's happened for the overall Sydney median house price to start slowing so much, okay? Especially compared to, say, Brisbane and compared to, to Adelaide, for example, being the top two performers at the moment. Well, Sydney and, and Melbourne right now has been a significant increase in supply, okay? We've gone from last year where we had buyer FOMO. So FOMO, fear of missing out. So buyers were willing to pay any amount of money, as much as they could afford, as much as their mortgage would, would let them or their borrowing capacity would let them, uh, they would try and just buy whatever they could, okay? But now we've got, a, it's literally been flipped on its head, okay? We now have seller FOMO. So we have more and more listings coming onto the market, increasing supply, okay? As sellers are starting to see, oh my God, I didn't realize how much my property's gone up in value. I don't want to miss out on, on that gain, right? And they're trying to, to jump in, okay? We are seeing more and more uh, properties are being taken to auction, and yet they're not reaching auction, okay? Sellers are accepting pre-auction offers, which is always a sign of a cooling market, and that sellers aren't quite as confident as they were even six months ago of getting that top premium price, okay? So we're seeing that in Melbourne as well. So as supply increases, and demand isn't increasing at, at the moment, okay, especially due to affordability and where the prices are, it's going to negate price growth for quite some time, okay? And then as you can see, different suburbs are performing differently, all right? But in areas like Brisbane and Adelaide, those markets are flying along because they've got so much demand, they don't have enough supply. So what's the takeaway message from, from all this? As I said earlier, don't rely on the headlines, rely on research and data. Number one, be clear on your goals and your strategy. Why are you looking to invest? Are you looking for positive cash flow? Are you looking to uh, invest in the short term, make a quick gain? Are you looking to invest for the longer term, which mind you is always a safer option, but you need to be clear on what your goals are. Then secondly, as I said before, do your research, not just on a city level, but on a suburb level, okay? Yes, that's gonna take more work, so you might need professional help, or you're gonna have, really have to do a lot more digging and a lot more research, but there is no doubt about it. Okay, 
People thinking about investing in property in 2022 are gonna end up in one of three camps. Camp number one, other people are gonna go, oh look, I can't be bothered doing my research. I know this area, it's a good market, and they're just gonna buy somewhere where close to where they live, somewhere where they can drive past, and then they're gonna really be surprised when the property doesn't work as well as it could have, and they're the ones who are gonna complain that property investing never works, and uh, it's just too risky. Then you've got camp number two. They're the ones who are gonna wait and see. They're gonna be influenced by the, the headlines. They're gonna choose nothing. They're gonna sit back, and then they're gonna wonder, oh, I missed the boat, right? Property prices, I missed the, the opportunity that was there, and they're gonna regret missing out on significant capital gain. Or camp number three. They're the ones who are going to do their research, find suburbs with great growth potential and actually make a good capital gain, plus potentially also getting positive cash flow. They're the suburbs that these people are targeting. But either way, camp number three, those are the investors who are gonna get ahead as a result of 2022. Now look, I don't know you, this is not advice, but you need to ask yourself one question. Which of these three camps are you gonna end up in? Hi, it's Nero here again, and thanks so much for watching. If you like what you saw, and you're looking for a proven recipe, a blueprint on how to build a property portfolio that gives you passive income, then click the link below this video and get a copy of my book, Wake Up Wealthier, How to Build a Property Portfolio That Pays an Income Each and Every Month. Okay, when you click the link and you download your book, you can get both the digital version and the audio version in case you don't like reading. All right, so, I used to sell this book for $49, but right now I'm making it totally free. Why? Because I want more people to get this information and I know that a segment of you will then like what you see in the book and choose to reach out to find out more about our services. But even if you don't, if you're serious about building a property portfolio that pays your passive income, then you really wanna get my book, Wake Up Wealthier. It contains the secrets that I have fine-tuned over the last 19 years. It's totally free for a limited time. Click the link below.